What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sam the Beer Guy channel. So today we are going to be talking about the East West pianos. Um, I've actually owned these for a long time, and I've never really dug into them other than for a brief second or two. Um, I've always had them because I've forever owned um, the Composer Cloud or the East West like subscription thing. Uh, I use that because it has a lot of string stuff. It has one of my favorite reverb spaces. Um, has a ton of like composing things that I use routinely. It also comes with pianos. I've just never used them because I always have other pianos to um, use. And so today I figured I would just get into some of these and look at them. I've been asked a few times recently, what do you think about the East West pianos? Um, and so I'm just going to hop in, make sure to like, sub, share, comment, all the things. Go follow me on Instagram. You know, trying to grow that following a little bit. Sam the Beard Guy official, if you can. So let's hop into these pianos. They are a bigger library. Um, they were like 70 and then 70 and then I think 50 and 50. So it's, you know, 200, 300 gigs of stuff um, that you have to find space for. <clears throat> so I will say one of the benefits to these pianos is it's a monthly subscription to have them. And so it's kind of a, I don't even know if you can buy them outright. I have them because you can subscribe. I'm not going to get into the debate about, you know, subscription models kind of being the future or not, and if it's better or not, but it is what it is. These, I own these through a subscription. I don't just subscribe to these. I probably wouldn't own these if I had to pay every month for them, but they do come part of the composer cloud that East West has. So I love all the East West stuff, um, string wise, orchestra wise, percussion wise. Uh, I use a lot of their stuff routinely. And so if you're looking for a piano that, you know, is, you don't have to pay a ton of money for to get, that's maybe an option. Uh, composer cloud is, I think it's like 30 bucks a month. So it might not be worth it if you're just looking for a piano because there are a lot of great pianos that you can just buy outright for a hundred bucks. And so, um, but if you are looking for more composing stuff, there is a lot of great east-west strings and reverbs uh, that you can use. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so you kind of you come with it comes with four pianos: the Bechstein, the Bosendorfer, the Steinway D, and the Yamaha. Um, I haven't played as many of these. I've played the Bosendorfer, Steinway D, and Yamaha a ton. Um, haven't had as much experience with this one. Uh, but yeah, so if you're not familiar with the the Opus or Play software, it kind of looks a little bit different uh, than most of the ones uh, out there. You're kind of used to the contact look or um, you know their own pr proprietary look that uh, software companies have. But uh, East West has kind of a unique feel to it, just the way you browse over here, um, play. It's nice to have a little mix tab. Um, I don't ever use this. So um, the 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 GUI, if if you haven't used this before, it's pretty straightforward. All your MIDI information, your sensitivities up here, you can kind of toy with this. Um, articulations, um, your envelope, your pointless picture. Uh, I like on this one that you can you can actually you know get real granular with the lid closing. Um, I don't know how they record. That typically, I feel like with libraries, they offer an open, a half, or a fully closed. That makes me think that they might be using some processing to mimic all of this stuff, or they like record one closed, one half, one open, and they do some kind of cross fading between the samples. I don't know. I could just be reading into that a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, you have your close, your close mic your player mic and your room mic a cool thing you can you know blend these in and so uh, a lot of libraries offer that it's not like this is the only one but it does have all the basic features you have your ambience you have a good option of uh, reverbs i will say you know they have i think some of the best some of the better reverbs and spaces um, just because they're so they're, they have a ton of orchestra string content that they've gone in and recorded a ton of spaces and so you actually have some really good convolution reverbs and just stages 
um, that are done really well. Uh, like I said, if you're going to have this library, you're probably going to get Spaces. Spaces 2, I think, is the most recent one. Spaces 2 is probably my favorite convolution reverb um, for orchestra stuff and uh, anything in the more traditional space. It's really great for anything. Um, I kind of go back and forth between Spaces and Vintage Verb or Valhalla stuff, depending on the medium I'm in. So, uh, yeah, it's got all your basic stuff. So let's get back into this and start playing. Um, they kind of are approaching their piano labeling like they do string stuff so if, if i were to go over into strings they have they're a really intense string um the way they label it's really intense so they they do all types of different um combinations and stuff so it f looks like they're kind of approaching that here for the pianos which might be a little jarring to people if you only use piano libraries you've never been in a string world and you're like, what are, you know, why do I have some of these extra options? That's just kind of the nomenclature, I guess, if that's the word, that they're kind of um, using here. That might not make sense. If it doesn't make sense, ignore it. So I'm going to go into full patches, DYN, which I'm assuming stands for dynamics, which I would assume is good. Going to go to the master. And I'm going to turn off the reverb because I don't, because the reverb... Kind of just want to hear the non-reverb sound.
yeah, so that feels okay. Let's get into the close mic. Something about the way it's panned just doesn't feel right to me. Um, I'm trying to not be dramatic. So I guess the close is just providing a different spread, it feels like. So I'll so mix this in a little bit. The mix feels a little bit better. I'll still the room in there. I'd say it feels, it feels, um, I don't know.
Yeah, I think changing that sensitivity setting a little bit made it feel a little bit better. Um, and uh, the player mic seems like the move. Um, I don't, I guess you could throw closed in there a little bit. If you want to kind of bring it a little bit farther forward to your face, uh, you can. But Bextine, yeah, that feels okay. Let's go into the Boysendorfer. I love the Boysendorfer, so hopefully this doesn't let me down. Let me turn off the ambient. I kind of like the rawness of that. One of my favorite sounds, by the way. Major seven chord over major seven chord. It's like E flat major seven over D flat major seven. It's just something about it. It's super heady of me, but uh, yeah, so the boys in Dorfer, I mean, 
typically kind of a mellower, uh, you know, um, just piano, a lot mellower than the Steinway and Yamaha coming up. But yeah, I mean, that one feels better than the, the Bechstein. the boys in Dorfer. Let's move on to the Steinway. I don't know why these sensitivity curves keep coming in like that. If you're really listening, you can like hear the hammer or something like squeaking in the back. Um, let's throw in. surprising to me. It just 
gets honky real quick, which is so shocking. Let's go to the Yamaha. The velocity transitions on this one seem tough. Um. Yeah, well, I can't even get through that one. Cause I'm, I mean, if I'm pulling this back, it should be. transition like I'm looking at my MIDI I might get 65 and as soon as I cross 70 just all of a sudden it gets really bright but it doesn't feel the same on that note and I could feel that when I was playing it's like things would pop out with a different timbre than I felt like I was playing. <sighs> yeah, I didn't love the Yamaha. I mean, Yamaha's in general run kind of midi, brighty versus like, yeah, I think most people would tell you Boys and Dor of the, you know, the, the Boys and Dorver Steinway D and Yamaha in that order, like soft, kind of in the middle, and then Yamaha typically runs pretty bright. Um, 
And so, but that's not even completely true. The Steinway's bright in its own way. Yamaha's felt like midi bright, like mid range bright. Um, the Bechstein is. Um, Yeah, I don't know. This is a tough one because, yeah, I'm kind of torn because I love all the East-West stuff. I've never laid back like this to talk, by the way. I I love all the East-West stuff, but this these pianos just feel a little dated to me. Like, I just, the velocity, like sample transitions feel weird. Um, you know, of course... I'm trying to make sure I have this set in a way that makes sense, but even when I do, it's just, I don't know, it just feels weird. Um, so I don't know, if you're, gonna, if you're looking for a piano and it's like, well, you know, how do I spend a, you know, a budget-friendly piano? There's pianos out there that are going to be $99 that if you were to rent this for three months, you basically are spending the same amount of money. And so, I don't know. I don't know that I can... I could see a niche use for some of these pianos. And I get that these are probably more in the orchestral space, potentially. Um, but, man, I just... I feel like if I recorded these, I'd have to go in and do a lot of MIDI work. I mean, this is a fully weighted keyboard. Shouldn't feel like it was translating well. Um, some of the stereo spread on some of the close mics seemed like not dramatic, but uneven. You know, like it didn't feel seamless up the keyboard and down the keyboard. So I don't know, man. I don't know. This is it. I don't think this is the move. And I feel like I can say that because I can strongly recommend everything else that would come with these pianos, which is all the composer cloud stuff. Like, the string libraries are great. Even the string libraries alone are great, but you get so much more than that. Um, I think they say, like, ten to $12,000 of stuff for the $30 or whatever month it is. But if you're just looking for a piano, I, I can't say this is the move, these pianos. There's so many other pianos that have come out recently that are just so good for a hair more expensive and just initially, in the long run, they'll be cheaper because you'll be paying for this forever. So, yeah, if you're looking for orchestral stuff, string stuff, man, I, I can't, I, I know I'm, this video is not about that, but you can't go wrong with the East West stuff. But if you're just looking for pianos, I don't know this is the move. And I don't usually do many reviews where I'm like, you know, I can't recommend to at least some audience. Um, but this is not it. And that sucks because I love this company. But uh, these just feel dated. And maybe they are. Maybe they know that and they're not, you know, trying to, you know, sell these. Or maybe just they're just, oh, you get some pianos with this big, gigantic package. Maybe that's the angle. But uh, I'm, I'm going to have to stick to my other recommendations. You know, I just did Pianoverse last week or two weeks ago. I just did Postfelt, which is... Man, quickly becoming one of my favorite felt pianos ever. Uh, the Native Instrument stuff feels way more seamless. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It's a bummer. I love East West, but these pianos, <laughs> not doing it for me. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just objectively wrong, and they are good. So, anyways, I guess thanks for watching. But thanks for watching. Make sure to like, sub, share, all the things, and I will see y'all later.